the complex planning and execution of the chapel of the princes, Cappella dei Principi, which endured over two centuries, merits a conference of its own. So here, I shall restrict myself to point out that much of the effort expended by Ferdinando in creating and strengthening the manufactory of the Pietre Dure in both financial and technical terms was intended for the realization of this grand enterprise. In fact, work was already being carried out in the last decade of the 16th century, even before the first stone of the building was laid in 1604. In the band that runs round the perimeter of the octagonal base of the chapel, profiles of large inlaid vases in hard stones are alternated with the coats of arm of the cities of the Grand Duchy, where we can once again discern a task for the inlay of the soft stones in luminous colors against the background of white marble. While work continued on the wall decorations, the project for the large altar with ciborium that was to stand in the center of the chapel also took shape, providing inspiration for the altar of Santo Spirito mentioned above. Left unfinished in the middle of the 17th century, the dazzling tabernacle for the Cappella dei Principi was dismantled a century later and is now known through scattered elements, a number of which are present in the exhibition. The various scenes illustrated on the altar were dominated by the commesso, which was the ideal technique for creating images and the scenes that had all the pictorial effect, effect of painting along with the added value of an immutable splendor. No longer bound by the limitations posed by the emergence of the background slab, as in the inlay, the Florentine mosaic, as it was evolving at the end of the 16th century, was by now in a position to confront the entire range of subject proper to the painting, from portraits, to still life, from landscape views, to religious representations. The counter-reformation movement of this time called upon sacred painting to illustrate the subject with a realism and eloquence. Ferdinando transferred the same criteria into the art of hard stones, generating a shift from decoration to representation. This courtly and precious art was thus transformed into a sort of a painting in stone designed to amaze and captivate the observer as demanded by the aesthetics of the mannerism. It is not surprising, therefore, that painters were called upon to create the original models, which the hard stone specialist then interpreted in the specific chromatic language of the stones. Decisive in the refinement of an art which rapidly achieved perfection was the presence in the court manufactory of the Milanese artists Caroni and Gaffurri, whom Francesco I had summoned to Florence as a specialist in engraved bases, but whom the demanding Ferdinando had also set to work on commesso and sculpture. All these forms are present in the magnificent tabernacle executed in collaboration by the two workshops of the Visa craftsmen between 1591 and 1600. Around the Milanese artists who were by now established in Florence, a circle of Florentine craftsmen developed, including, among others, the son of Bernardino di Porfirio, mentioned above, and Francesco Ferrucci, one of a family of Fiesole sculptors who were specialized in porphyry. 
This led to the establishment of a technical excellence that was destined to be consistently transmitted and continued without pause in the future of the Galleria dei Lavori. For three centuries, the Florence manufactory produced an amazing quantity of masterpieces that are now scattered in museum and collection all over the world. On occasion, some emerge from oblivion to delight and fascinate us, as in the case of a splendid floral octagon dating to the late Medici period that was unknown until a few years ago and can now be admired in the exhibition. Unpublished today and shown here to the public for the first time, is this painting in hard stones representing the game of billiards, which was believed to have been lost and which I was recently able to track down in a private collection. It is evidence of the artistic and the technical excellence that the court manufactory managed to maintain even after the Habsburg Lorraine dynasty succeeded the Medici to the throne of Tuscany. It is part of a prestigious series of over 60 paintings in hard stones, which were executed in Florence between 1750 and 1767 for the Grand Duke of Tuscany and the Emperor of Austria, Francis Stephen of Lorraine. Still conserved in the Opificio delle Pietre Dure, the present day Hair to the court manufactory is the pictorial model for the game of billiards painted in 1752 by Giuseppe Zocchi, the artist who managed to infuse new vigor into the subject matter of the Florentine mosaics. Let us hope that the future may hold in store further new evidence of the splendor of the Florence manufactory. Thank you for your attention.